For our final project, I'm deciding to work on Roy's adaptation model as a theory in practice. The big question posed here is why is linking theory to practice important? Well, professional nursing is evidence-based with a systematic approach. Using a particular theory allows the nurse to promote health of the patient, family, and community using logical steps in assessment, diagnosing, goal setting, intervention, and evaluation. It helps give a foundation on which to base your practice and guide your actions so that they are purposeful and helpful. With Roy's adaptation model, it is important to acknowledge that the patient will not always return to a previous state of health. In fact, death may be the final outcome of the situation. No matter the final outcome, the way the person is able to respond can bring about increased health, peace, and improved overall environment. According to Phillips, Roy's adaptation model defines health as being and becoming an integrated and whole person. It also says that the goal of nursing is to help the person achieve adaptation. This will lead to optimum health, quality of life, and death with dignity. To help the person learn to adapt for the sake of health and well-being is a nursing goal fitting for every patient and situation. The case scenario that we're going to use today is of a 43-year-old woman who is admitted with abdominal pain. She is diagnosed with metastatic cancer that is spread throughout her body. The doctors are unable to locate the primary source. She is a single mother of three boys who range in age from 11 to 15. She's in a serious relationship with someone. Within two months of her diagnosis, she's cachexic, has lost all of her hair, and has constant severe pain in her back. It was decided to place a feeding tube for nutrition and to perform a celiac plexus block for pain control. Now that we have a case model to compare to, let's look at an overview of Roy's adaptation model, also known as RAM. The first thing is to assess behavior. We're using a systematic approach here to the patient care. Um, Roy proposes that behavior is our response or reaction to a stimuli. This behavior is going to be either adaptive and healthy or non-adaptive and ineffective. The response is not passive, but rather depends on a person's coping mechanisms. These are both cognitive and psychological processes. Next, what is the stimuli the, that is causing this response? A focal stimuli is the main issue or phenomenon that challenges the person's ability to adapt. It may be internal or external. Contextual stimuli are ones that directly have an impact on the focal stimuli. Residual stimuli are any other stimuli that may be internal or external without any obvious effect or influence on the patient's well-being. Next, our nursing diagnosis is based on how we view the person's adaptation, not just a nursing diagnosis. Once a judgment has been made regarding the patient's adaptive status, the nurse and client need to honestly discuss goals which will be realistic and include the behavior expected. Lastly, evaluation addresses the effectiveness of the interventions and to determine if the goals were met. Roy's adaptation, adaptation model also has four specific areas that she focuses on. Um, this is the physiological mode that includes five main needs of the physical body. This can be oxygenation, nutrition, elimination, activity and rest, and protection. This is the way the person responds as a physical being to the stimuli. The self-concept mode includes psychological and spiritual components. This includes the physical and personal by acknowledging body sensation and body image. Interdependence involves close relationships and the role function mode refers to the roles of the person and their function and expectations of these roles. Now that we have the basic outline of what Roy's adaptive adaptation model has, let's go ahead and put together a care plan for our patient. First, let's go in order again and be systematic. We're gonna begin with the physiologic mode. Physically, we see that the patient has lost a lot of weight. She's fatigued and she's in constant pain. The main stimulus that is causing this is her regulatory subsystem and it's cancer. Um, it, it's solely responsible for her physical responses. Secondary to the cancer is impaired nutrition that is contributing to her weight loss and a risk of infection. That's the contextual stimuli. After assessing the stimuli and the behavior, we need to come up with some nursing diagnoses. These are pretty self-explanatory. She has altered nutrition due to anorexia and the disease process. She's a potential risk for infection related to chemotherapy. She's a risk for impaired skin integrity due to decreased mobility, and she has pain. 
So some goals that we want to set with her, not just by ourselves, assuming this is good for her, but we want to set goals with her. We want to go ahead and get her getting a, having an adequate caloric intake. We want to see absence of infection, continued skin integrity, and pain control. The next step is to go ahead and start with our intervention. Now diet is dependent on the doctor's orders, but if allowed, we wanna offer her food and supplements that taste good to her. This is gonna increase her caloric intake, help decrease her risk of infection, and help her body heal as much as possible. Um, we wanna encourage all patients and staff to wash their hands before and entering and after leaving the room to decrease the risk of infection. Reposition her as often as possible and apply protective barrier as needed to decrease any risk of skin integrity or skin breakdown. And then um, for pain, we, we really want to administer pain medications as often as we can and teach relaxation techniques. Once we're done with this and we've done, started our interventions, we're going to go on to evaluation. We see that her weight continued to decrease, so the peg was placed. The patient did remain free of infection. Her skin integrity remained intact, but her pain was not well controlled with meds, even with a PCA pump. Relaxation techniques did help with some, pain, with some of the pain management, but essentially she ended up going for a celiac plexus block. With our patient's physiologic mode, we saw that her level of adaptation was definitely compromised. But let's go ahead and start on her interdependence adaptive mode. Let's start with the assessment of her behavior. She does have a significant other and family members that are highly involved in her care. She has three children who visit daily and the patient appears relaxed with family. Let's assess the stimuli. We see that the, the focal stimuli is that the patient is physically removed from her family because she is in the hospital. Contextual stimuli show that the patient is a single mom who is in a serious relationship. Looking at this assessment right off, we see that her level of adaptation for this is integrated. Her behavioral responses to the stimuli of being in the hospital for an extended time show a high level of adaptation by her and her loved ones. Next, we want to go, up, go ahead and come up with some nursing diagnoses. Despite that she has an integrated adaptation and self-concept mode, there's still a risk for anxiety or change in her support dynamics due to the nature of the disease. So let's go ahead and set some goals with the patient and encourage some quality time with family and friends that can allow a, a continued success rate. For interventions, we did, we're going to allow the privacy. We're going to allow for flexibility with visitation schedule and accommodate the family. And we want to encourage her family and loved ones to be an active part of care. And by family, we're not just meaning children or blood relatives, but any significant others in her life at this point. In evaluating, we see that our patient has remained free from anxiety and continues to have family and support systems that remain constant. This shows that her adaptation continues to be integrated, which is the highest level of adaptation we can achieve. Okay, before moving on to the self-concept mode, let's do a quick review here. We've looked at the physiologic mode, which she had some impaired adaption. Um, her body physically is just not adjusting well to the cancer. Um, some of our interventions, when we evaluated them, were not successful, and so other interventions had to come into play. Some of them were successful. In her interdependence mode, she was highly adaptive, very well integrated, um, and, and that's been great for her. Um, so let's next be moving on to the self-concept mode, and we're going to start with the behavior assessment. Um, she has not verbalized any concerns to the nurse regarding her cancer or prognosis, and um, despite her weight loss and hair loss, she remains well-dressed, wearing some street clothes as much as possible, always has on a little bit of makeup, and actually has a healthy glow despite her illness. Um, looking at the assessment of stimuli, the, the main focal stimuli here is that she has a poor prognosis. Um, this is very much an impact on your self-concept. Uh, contextual is just the lack of energy and a change in a physical appearance due to both the disease process and the treatments. Coming up with some nursing diagnoses here for her self-concept, we're looking at a risk for spiritual distress. Um, just again, with the poor prognosis, this leads to thinking about the end of life and what's coming next. Also, any unresolved issues from the past or recent will have an impact on the patient's self-concept and spiritual well-being. Um, Self-esteem disturbance is possible due to physical deterioration. Uh, we need to set some goals with the patient that are pretty realistic. We want her to go ahead and verbalize acceptance of the prognosis and not be in denial. And we want her to exhibit grieving as needed for any change in body image or of the prognosis. Um, for our interventions, we want to encourage her to verbalize feelings and fears. We want to invite the patient to speak with a pastor or chaplain or anybody of her faith as desired. 
and allow her to wear her own clothes and makeup as much as possible whenever this is feasible. After the interventions, we go ahead and start evaluating and we see that our patient has verbalized a sense of peace and acceptance. Not only verbalized, but as a nurse, we can actually see the peace in this, in this patient. Also, she's continued to wear her own bathrobe, underclothes, and makeup. So we see that um, the, this has showed an integrated adaption and the intervention should continue and evolve as necessary. Our final mode of assessment for our patient is the role function mode. Um, when we start assessing her behavior, we see that she cries occasionally when talking about her children and boyfriend, and she verbalizes a strong love and bond with her family. Um, for a stimuli assessment, the focal is going to be fear of not being around for her children and for not being able to care for them. Contextual, again, is a poor prognosis. Her level of adaptation in this role function is compensatory. It's difficult for her to be integrated because areas of it will be permanently changed such as role of caregiver. The strong relationships are evident between the patient and her children, patient and siblings, and the patient and her boyfriend. This is an integrated adaptation level. For role function, the focal stimulus is not being around her family and loved ones and the permanent change in role function. We see that again with the poor prognosis contributes and is an underlying cause. Her primary role in being her own caregiver is impaired by fatigue, pain, and disease process. Her secondary role as mother and girlfriend is impaired by the disease process and poor prognosis. So that's where we get our nursing diagnosis from for the ineffective primary and secondary role transition. The goals for this are an effective role transition which is manifested by verbalizing acceptance of prognosis and preparations made for herself and her family. For interventions, we want to allow for adequate periods of rest to restore the patient's energy and set aside time to listen to the patient as she verbalizes fears, thoughts, and experiences. Again, the same with the other interventions previous, we want the family to be there as much as possible, allow for private time. Because those interventions have already been started, we're not listing those again here. For our evaluation of this, um, the patient did die with dignity and her family was at her side and all of her preparations had been made. She was surrounded by loved ones and her effective role transition was manifested by a peaceful passing. So our concluding question, was there really a difference using Roy's adaptation model? Absolutely. Instead of focusing on nursing tasks, using this theory allows us to focus on the patient as a whole, using more of a holistic focus on care. While there are still tasks to perform, we can integrate them into the care instead of compartmentalizing. Focusing on the patient instead of the task allows us to reprioritize our goals and set goals with our patient, not just for them. This is the way nursing care should be provided. So after this study, we're deciding should we use theory for all patient care? Well, while not, not all theories work for all situations, there is bound to be one or two that can be appropriate for any given situation. You need to determine the appropriate theory for that setting. And modification of theories to fit an area of practice or a specific person is acceptable. For instance, in an outpatient setting, it may be difficult to apply Roy's adaptation model, but Leninger's theory of cultural care is absolutely appropriate and applicable. Continue reviewing theories and how to apply them in your area of nursing and share your findings and experiences with your coworkers and staff. But if a theory does not readily come to you, do not sacrifice patient safety to make the theory fit. The right theory will make itself obvious. Always err on the side of patient safety. So in conclusion, no matter the theory we use, our goal is to promote the health of our clients using compassion, knowledge, and skills. And using a theory helps us accomplish this.